I'm just grateful that someone, shining star, as bright as Ginger, was in my life, even if it was a short time. I didn't see anything going on with her at that age. You know, 12, 13, she just seemed really upbeat and happy. And, and then they moved, and I would still, you know, like I said, stay in touch with her. And I got a call from her once, and she was in treatment. So I talked to her when she was at, I think it was New Beginnings, what was going on with her and what happened. And she struggled in the early years with her sexuality and, and her gender identity. And so she, um, I think that's what tipped it. Her dad was a homophobic. So that in the back of her mind was tough for her to deal with. Um, we talked about that and, and down the road they end up having a relationship. You know, once she finally, once it finally came out. So I had a, a young life student, her and Ginger were best friends and they got in a lot of trouble and they would bring alcohol to school and a lot of drugs and they were partiers and wild and crazy girls. Joy had tried to fill me in on what to expect from Ginger, and I picture somebody named Ginger is, you know, Ginger from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, Ginger was just freaking out when she had put in for COP because she didn't think she was going to get it of her background. So we talked a little bit about it. It was a joy to me to see somebody that had had this background that was putting in for COP, and you were just you were cheering for her through the whole process because, like Joy said, she never hid from you that she'd struggled with substance abuse and she had beat all those things in Fort Collins police and helped her get through that. Now she was going to come back and, and work for us. And I can remember then the first day that she started and I'm picturing, you know, Ginger uh, from Gilligan's Island is going to come work for us and it was it was Ginger Mose and it was like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, and she, I, the first time I saw her, it was just like we were the best of friends. And like most cops do, we park like this in the parking lot at Perkins and she scared me because <laughs> she was so serious about her job and she was so let's go out and get that bad guy and let's go right now and here I'm like one week on the job and I'm like oh lord you know I gotta work with this girl in my area she can be just as intense though having fun and we would just be a riot just just crazy fun and one time we were driving home uh driving back to the police department we were working a big case and they were building the justice center where the new courthouse is and all the courtrooms and stuff and right up till the bitter end they had this crane built in the center of the thing and the crane was all the way through the building. You looked like a complete building, except for there's a crane in there. And then at some point, they said, I'll dismantle the crane and take it away. But she started looking at that, and she started going off about, I bet the guy who forgot to take the crane out of the building is going to get a bad performance evaluation. <laughs> and we just started going on about that and had to pull the car over because we were laughing so long. She was pretty much a rock star up in the de detective bureau. Yeah, she was a great, a great cop, very caring. You know, very caring, especially in the Lacey case. Man, she poured her heart into that. My first experience with Ginger was when she was investigating my daughter's murder. And I called Julie, and she said that I was lucky that Ginger was on the case, that she had a bad bedside manner, but she would not eat meals, lose sleep at night, and wouldn't stop until she found her and until she got the case airtight, and that I was in really good hands. She's very talented, very smart. very tenacious about those cases. She was very, it's like she, you know, the kid cases, I mean, very sympathetic with the kid cases. Um, you know, it's you could tell she had hurt at one time in her life and she wanted to stop that for somebody else. Um, you know, coming from the 
personal experiences maybe that she had as a kid. Maybe she could sympathize or relate to the victims a little bit. I don't know, but she just seemed very, very engrossed in her cases. Um, more so than, than the other people up there. It doesn't, you know, they're not less of a detective because of it, but she just seemed like she really, really got involved in these cases. I don't know about her personality. She just had this personality and this ability to engage and talk with people that they would just give it all up to her. And she, she was just, there, there was nothing you could hide from her. And I, I, it wasn't something she learned, it was just her. At the time, she had our biggest cases. And, uh, and there was nobody better than she was on. There was nobody better, nobody more insightful. Um, nobody had more talent. And no matter, the thing about Ginger is she never met a stranger. So she could instantly build a rapport and a bond with the DA, a judge, a witness, a suspect. And I mean, she was in their head just that quick. And um, that, that was a gift. It wasn't just that she was a people person. I mean, she was gifted with insight. And, um, and that, was, that was her strength and probably also her weakness. The complete opposite of what she'd worked her whole life for. And she was going in a path that she'd spent her whole life trying to eradicate from our community, and that's where she was going with it. So, At the very end, she called me at work one night, and she asked me if my house was unlocked. I said, no, I have a lot of expensive things in my house. She said, what time do you get off? I said, well, midnight, and uh, she cussed. And I said, well, what's going on? She goes, oh, I just want to leave you a present. I thought, well, that's odd. So uh, we hung up, and I didn't think anything of it. Um, come to find out, she wanted to get my gun. As it turned out, she uh, did manage to get a gun from a friend. And that's the gun she used to take her life. Yeah, I mean, it was horrible. It was horrible. It's, uh, I don't think it gets counted in police suicides, that one. And it's a shame, because, um, you know, police um, suicide really is never, I don't think, about the job. It's about how people cope with the job. It's about substance abuse. It's about not getting help from all the stuff that we see. But, um, I mean, I guess I just said it is about the job. But I know that in the end, if I was going to count police suicides, she would be one. And I don't think she probably makes those roles, and that's a shame. The tragedy with her is that um, she had not the potential for brilliance, not the promise of brilliance, but she was brilliant. And she demonstrated that here for years. Um, she didn't have to like build her life and get sober to, to be great, she was, and then she fell. Um, that was, that's the step.